Live from Welcome Turner Gymnasium, you're watching Turner ODAC Gymnasium. women's basketball Still right break, here but on LHS. And I'm Sam Graham LHS. alongside Evan Gates. Sam Graham, Evan Gates alongside you for yet another ODAC men's basketball contest. And Evan, you said it earlier, the battle of 460. It's Roanoke that has come to town this evening. Seven and seven, one and five in league play entering tonight. Lynchburg, on the other hand, the turnaround in full effect. Nine and six, four and two entering this one in a tightly contested battle. And let's go ahead and say it, one of, if not the best, you know what, let's really put ourselves out there, the best uh, men's basketball conference in the country. I don't think you can find one that's better at the top or better at the middle than the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. It's incredibly, uh, uh, you know, battle-tested uh, night in and night out. Road games are hard to come by. That's what you look for in a good conference. And Lynchburg's put themselves right in the thick of it. Well, Sam, think about this. This is literally a one-two punch of a conference. Hampton Sydney is first in the nation. Guilford following close behind, and all season long, it's been that in and out action. You don't know who's gonna be in the top 25. These two teams obviously outside of that right now, but we know that they are playing good basketball. They're gonna play some great basketball teams down the stretch. Yeah, absolutely, and both teams have gotten a little bit of a, you know, a taste of that. Lynchburg uh, coming off a pair of uh, splits in the road back into conference play, lost on the road at Washington and Lee, but then followed that up with a big time win over a Shenandoah team. They entered last week, ranked in the top 25 and undefeated as well. And you know, it really doesn't matter who you've played. If you're 12 and 0, you're undefeated, getting into the new year, you're doing something right. So that was a huge win away from home from Lynchburg, uh, something that they're getting a lot better at. And we'll take a look at some of the numbers uh, that have helped Lynchburg get to that point. Uh, Lynchburg's improved in scoring, they've improved in stopping their opponents from from scoring Rono comes in there it's been a lot of close games and you know for the most part especially in conference play they're just coming out on the wrong side of that but you know don't look at this for a second that one in five record in league play and think this is a team that can't hang they absolutely can uh, they take care of the ball really well this is a sound team especially on the mental side of things very well coached uh, and I you know they're gonna be a tough test tonight and you know winning on the road is difficult Roanoke's had a little bit of trouble with that coming in uh, but again this is gonna be a battle we think pretty much from start to finish. Well, discipline all around, and that goes into our keys to the game. We know that Roanoke's going to come to town ready to play. They do that every single game, but this is a series they have dominated in the past, but coming in today, Lynchburg might have a little bit of that edge, but Roanoke has to guard the perimeter. This might be the biggest number we look at. They are 390, excuse me, 295th in the nation for three-point defense. Lynchburg's 25th. That's a pretty big difference. And then Roanoke has to draw fouls. Only eight makes from the stripe versus Macon. They average 15. Lynchburg has to shoot smartly. They can exploit those double teams down low, kicking out for threes, as well as passing with precision. We know that spreading out this Roanoke defense will open up the lane if they double team just 17 assists in the last two games. Three ball could be huge in this one. We will break down and preview just a little more. And most importantly, we will have tip off for you on the other side of this break. You're watching ODAC men's basketball on LHSM. Look what you're missing. is all about you, your ideas, and your goals. We've got one professor for every 10 students so you can get all the support you need. In the classroom, in the lab, or in nature, you'll learn by putting yourself out there and we're right there with you. Private education is too expensive? Think again. At the University of Lynchburg, you can get a personalized education for the cost of a state school. If you're commuting and you get our top scholarships, you could pay much less. And you get all that without the hassle of giant lecture halls. Our faculty know your name here and do more than just teach. 
You might even do research together and plan out your next career move. few more teams have checked back in on campus here. Again, you know, still about a week and a half or so away from classes getting back underway. But, you know, I, I think the break's been pretty kind uh, to Lynchburg, you know, looking at where they were, you know, when, when we headed home for break. I know, Evan, you've been on the call for a couple of these games, you know, since we headed out for the holidays. Uh, this Lynchburg team, like we said, they come in tonight 9-6. and six. They've got the six win total from a year ago. That's way back in the rear view mirror. Almost can't see it at this point. Now Lynchburg, you know, still early in January is creeping up on doubling up that total. This is one you, you kind of got, you feel like you need to get if you're Coach Scott and Co. You know, you're at home, two pretty evenly matched teams. But like we just said, you know, talking about this tough league battle, you, know, you really feel like these that you get at home, you got to take advantage of them. Well, you can't coach confidence, right? That Shenandoah game was a great example of what this team can do. They came out firing from the start. You think about Lynchburg throughout this season and there's the style of play. This is the first time they had a different starting lineup all season long. And so coming out, you know what to expect. I think that the veterans really came out. You think about Miles Taylor. We've said his name a lot this season. They're going to come out and do it again today. I think they're battle tested and ready for ball. You talk about the difference in starting lineup. You know, we, we got our players to watch as always, and we'll touch on one of them right now for Lynchburg. You know, as, as you bring up that point, that is Miles Taylor. You know, he cracked the starting lineup for the last time, last game out. He's going to start for us again tonight. But we've gotten yet another uh, alteration to the starting lineup, and I think one that we're really interested to see as you take a look at our player to watch for the Roanoke side of things, Marcus Morgan. Uh, he's been fantastic this year. He's a guy that maybe doesn't have the best stats on the team, but he's the guy that I promise you, you know, watching back at home, he's probably going to jump out to you. Incredible athlete. He can hurt you in a myriad of ways. Got great control of his shot, can score from, you know, a number of spots on the floor and picks his spots well. And then obviously there is your guy, Miles Taylor. Uh, he's been fantastic this year. The per 40 numbers are phenomenal. Been coming off the bench, leads the team in scoring. Now he's into the starting lineup, and that's gone pretty well too. Led to that road win at Shenandoah. But tonight, Jake Hart back into the starting lineup. DeAndre Ross out. He will play tonight. Will come off the bench, I would imagine, pretty early on in this contest. Ross, a fantastic score for this Lynchburg team, the transfer guard out of Kentucky Christian. You take a look at your starting lineups for tonight as the teams make their way to midcourt. Roanoke in some sharp black road uniforms. Lynchburg in those home grays they've been sporting this year. Uh, you see, we'll run through the starting lineup for Roanoke. It will be Gaither, Morgan, Kuthan will certainly make his mark on this game as well. Rotman and Joshua Morse round things out. We'll see. If we get any Zach Rosenthal tonight, not sure of his status. That's a pretty typical starter for this Roanoke team, but again, not in the starting five, so we'll just monitor that. And then one last note, do not believe we will see Jason Easton tonight. Does not look like he is in uniform. So Lynchburg down now, not only Elijah Davis, but now it's best available three-point shooter, arguably, in Easton. Uh, but maybe that ramps things up on the defensive side, and Lynchburg opens tonight with a defensive stop. Well, I think that's why this lineup is so strong for Lynchburg as well. We touched on it before the game, the fact this is another different lineup that we've seen. Miles Taylor back in there. If you shoot the three ball early and take Dre Ross off the bench, he's only going to add pace and open up that lane. It's a really active Roanoke team. You see that activity, especially early on, coming out of timeouts, coming out of uh, you know halves, starting the game, really physical on the defensive side. Lots of traps, lots of double teams. We'll see how Lynchburg handles that. You know, this isn't a young Lynchburg team, and certainly nobody's really young at this point in the year, right? You kind of grow up right in front of our eyes as we get into January. Uh, so far on defense, things taking care of themselves, though. Lynchburg looking for the first bucket for themselves as well. It'll be post turnaround. Jay, how about it? Cam O'Connor. Speaking of guys that can score in a number of ways, O'Connor, we were calling for him earlier today, Evan. You and I were talking about this matchup. Wanted to see if we got some more O'Connor post-ups, and there's one very early on in this contest. Well, Mr. Offensive Coordinator, right? He does a little bit of everything down low, and you think about O'Connor, just the experience he has brought. That's been big, but now you got Miles Taylor, another big body down low. We know if Roanoke wants to crash that paint today, these guys can really get active and try to find some buckets early. Yeah, and Taylor does a great job getting to the basket as well. 
And he, he, the driving ability is arguably the best on this Lynchburg team. It's a nifty little spin move in close. That's Gaither shot up and off the mark. Rebound put back attempt credit to Morse. Uh, he is fouled on the way up, and we'll get our first free throws of the game. Morse heading to the line where he's one of the better free throw shooters on this Roanoke team, 88% coming in. And obviously with that 6-7 frame, that's always a big plus. Anytime you have that at your disposal, it's going to be a positive sign. This team is one that doesn't necessarily shoot the three ball at a high rate. They're not going to go and try to really win this game from beyond the perimeter. So using those guys down low is key. Think about the rebound battle as well, something that might be kind of in the back of our minds as we go into this one. But this is a squad that, if they don't have a lot of long shots, can still get some offensive rebounds down low. Hornets look to get it in close to O'Connor again this time. He draws the foul, not on the way up, so it'll be an opportunity to take it out from under the basket here for Lynchburg. And looking at it, it's a Roanoke defensive fan, an opportunity to apply some of that pressure. Give Lynchburg a little trouble getting it in. They're unable to. Credit to the Hornets offensively. We'll set things up once more. 22nd reset of the shot clock. Faust give off. To Hart. Hart pass on the run. There's that driving ability. Backs out of it. Hart. You know, if you looked at Jake Hart's stat lines for about every other game or so, you might think he's a 6'7, you know, and maybe a combo wing. He's got a little bit of shooting ability, but likes to hurt you inside. Now nah, he's about six foot one and a true point guard for this Lynchburg team, but knows how to get himself open and close. Quickly in transition, trying to go coast to coast was Taylor. He is stopped close to the basket, but not a bad shot for Lynchburg. Pearson Young flashing off the football skills goes airborne to try and pick off that pass. Roanoke maintains first three ball of the evening off the mark as well. Lots Duck. to unpack from that sequence. You see back and forth we go in the beginning of this game. Some slowed down plays trying to get good passes. Now Lynchburg showing that they can run. Lynchburg can run with the best of them. Pearson Young going to fall away on the jumper. No good from just inside the arc. Roanoke quickly the other way. Roanoke content to run with the Hornets right now. That can be dangerous at times. Lynchburg team that at its full strength is going to give you 12 or 13 guys and rotate them like crazy. So it's just hard, you know, from a purely stamina perspective to keep up. But Roanoke, like we said, perfectly fine early on here, getting up and down the court. Well, in different matchups, that large bench can kind of present different options. And we know against a team like Roanoke, who's only going to use a few guys with some heavy minutes, that can really play well to Lynchburg's advantage if they're able to get different three shooters, different guys who want to run as well. Difference in styles, difference in roster constructions. We only expect to see nine or ten guys for Roanoke here tonight. That could even shorten up a little bit with the absence of Zach Rosenthal. Or maybe Roanoke's forced to call on somebody they don't typically go to. Looks like Zach Rosenthal just entered the game. So out of the starting lineup, not out of this game. And for Roanoke, that's a huge sign because you think about the three shooting he brings, 39.5%. That's Macy Mullins-esque from last year, if you remember what she was able to do. But giving Roanoke another shooter, that's going to open up Lynchburg's defense. Rosenthal is fantastic. 30 minutes a game leads the team on the season. Like you said, 13.5 points, a consistent shooter from pretty much everywhere on the floor. Again, we're not sure exactly the reason on him coming off the bench today but you know what the Roanoke coaching staff might be saying the same about DeAndre Ross who we have not seen yet again only three 57 gone by cutting to the basket nice move Faust able to finish in close credit the assist to his point guard Jake Hart we'll give a little one-man pressure on the inbound and then back off Roanoke across the timeline 1550 to go in the first half Lynchburg leads it six to four Hand up, Pearson Young trying to alter that shot of Zach Rosenthal, but he swings the Maroons back in front. Another three ball. That might have just jumped him up to 40% on the year from deep. Well, the south ball, a little slick and sweet on that release. You're not going to see many throughout the game where he's able to have time, but even if he's pressured, he's going to get that shot off quick. Lynchburg has to be ready. There's Jake Hart, a rare three ball. That's a skew. So first couple of three-point attempts for Lynchburg been really not that close. Faust from the far side did not draw iron and then Jake Hart there same deal and close so we'll see if Lynchburg can knock off some of the rust. Rosenthal looked to make it twice as nice. 
And the offensive foul off, of going for the ball, we'll say. It's gonna go against Clayton Gaither. He collided with Jake Rust. Sam, if I didn't know any better, I'd think this is a diving competition to start this one. There are bodies everywhere. Yeah, Jonathan Faust on the other side was all over trying to hustle down that last loose ball that Roanoke ultimately came away with. Yeah, this has been, you talk about track meets, that, that's a phrase that might be overdone a little bit, but that's tr truly what we've got right now. Look at Lynchburg in the half court, the passing crisp and quick. Ball not touching the floor a lot. Both of these teams looking to score earlier in the shot clock. Good defense here, though, from Roanoke. Lynchburg's first couple options haven't been there. Skip pass, Taylor near side, drives in. Contact, no call, doesn't matter. Miles Taylor, when he gets downhill, is difficult to stop. Lynchburg's leading scorer has a pair. Lynchburg back in front three. Early lead changes just over five minutes into this game. Well, good defense, better offense in that situation. You saw the skip pass, almost a little risky, but Miles Taylor, like you said, does such a great job of finding his spot. And that experience at all five positions on the floor, he just knows when to get the bucket. Hart comes up to try and pick the pocket of Morse. Instead, it'll swing near side the three once again off the mark. So Roanoke having some trouble from deep, save that one Rosenthal make. Didn't see a cut. Whole lot of attempts early in this game. They're starting to stack up. Lynchburg's gonna try another one. 0 for 3 start from deep for the Hornets. Jonathan Faust trying to serve on the cleanup crew. Unsuccessful. Faust, one of those guys who's just gonna stuff the stat sheet. And early in the season, you didn't really see it, but his role down low has been awesome because as you see now, getting down in defensive, he's not afraid to be everywhere on the court. And if you're a Hornets coach or fan, you love it. Faust, physical, athletic, Hard working, uh, offense has really come together as of late as well. We've got our under 14 media timeout. We'll go ahead and take it with you, and we will do it by telling you our score at 1328 left in the first half. Lynchburg leads it eight to seven. in the dream. USA, Mexico. I was so excited. We mentioned Lynchburg enters this game on maybe not a win streak. I don't know if one game is a streak, but coming off a big win on the road against Shenandoah, Roanoke, uh, not quite the, the same deal coming off that tough loss against one of uh, the ODAC's best, one of the nation's best over the past several years. That's Randolph Macon. We mentioned those road games are tough, but an 85-57 to 57 decision in Ashburn last time out for Roanoke. You got to imagine that left a sour taste in Coach Nunley and this whole team's mouth. And, you know, that might contribute to some of this quick play, you know, really trying to come out and establish their own rhythm early in this game. Well, there's immediate energy for sure. And this Roanoke team is better than what the scoreline said on that one. Outscored 45-21 in that first half. But, hey, I think this is a reminder, if you are a Randolph-Macon fan or just an ODAC fan in general, it should be a reminder that Macon is very aware of the rankings. I think they're taking them with a grain of salt because you know so many teams are strong. Yeah, Randolph-Macon in uncharted territory is Miles Taylor. Saw him score in close. That time the pull-up from the charity stripe and he knocks it down. He, that percentage has really been improving for Miles Taylor at the line itself and doing it in the regular course of play as well. But yeah, with Randolph Macon, yeah, obviously that's a team with a national championship under its belt in recent memory. Uh, you know, a team that 
has really accustomed itself to being at the top of the ODAC. They got some company up there now. Uh, teams like Guilford, uh, Hampton, Sydney, Virginia Wesleyan, and then a, a big, very talented middle, you know, is probably where this Lynchburg and Roanoke teams kind of fall. They can give teams some trouble on a nightly basis. Uh, Randolph Macon, like we said, different sort of territory in the national rankings, I believe still sitting around that 20th mark. Uh, but and we have our friends over at d3data.com. Uh, they disagree. They say Ron, uh, Randolph Macon still the number one team in the country. We'll see if the, the play and the results from a record standpoint ultimately match the efficiency numbers. But, you know, from a strictly basketball, how you are playing, you know, what the numbers say on a per 100 possessions basis, Randolph Macon still at that top tier level play could make a big run late in the season. Well, that's what's so interesting about this ODAC. It's anybody's game on anybody's day. We've seen Roanoke come out of that timeout firing, and there are so many players like Marcus Morgan who gets to the rack who can just come out on one night and really show what they can do. A couple changes here. DeAndre Ross, Landon Sutton into the game. We didn't call out Mason Makovic when he entered things for Lynchburg. Kovic, a good presence down low. He's going to get it on the kick from Sutton. Good ball movement from Lynchburg. Extra pass from Fitch. Finds Sutton. Eight seconds on the shot clock. He puts up the floater. Not a bad shot, but off the rim and out. Again, Roanoke wants to run. Morse going to trigger a three, and he's off the mark. How many times do you see the 6'7 forward getting down for three, but he's so comfortable shooting it. You think about Makovic on Lynchburg's end, another guy who's not afraid to extend the range, but it's going to be a foul off the ball. Height has never really been much of a conversation for either of Lynchburg's basketball teams because we know that their style of play really revolves around transition, getting those quick looks. But this is a very big value for them this year. You see Cam O'Connor coming into the equation. You think about just from a shooting perspective, are you getting more looks in the paint or from beyond the perimeter? I think every game that's going to shift, we'll have to see how Roanoke continues to respond. Kevon James checks in for Lynchburg. Hornets will go to Makovic, and he's whistled for the travel. So a turnover going against the Hornets, only the second one of the game. Uh, Roanoke came into this one with a slight, uh, just about one per game advantage in the turnover department. 12 a game for Roanoke entering this evening's contest, 13 for Lynchburg. So a good sign early on, only two like we said in the outset for this Lynchburg team. And when you look at the pace of play, it can be tough sometimes to hang on to the ball. Good quick move off the dribble for name. I don't have on my first initial spotting chart here for this Roanoke team. Looks like it's Colin Fayette who got it done, and that's just an example of depth. Something we question coming in, and hey, off the bench, Makovic can do it too. Absolutely. So here we go. Some Bench points stacking up for each team. Not many starters on the floor right now. One of them is Morgan. He puts up his second shot of the game. And, you know, going into that first media timeout, I'm not sure we called Morgan's name one time other than as our player to watch. And, and you know, in the starting lineups, he started to make himself a little more available these last several possessions down. Well, sometimes at that point guard position, too, you don't always have the stats, but you can certainly facilitate things. Foot on the line there for Joshua Morse. A quick conversation with one of our officials. Just wanted to check it. It did look like official got the got the call right there. It was close, and, you know, good-looking shot. Did not touch the rim. Fitch wants to answer with three. He draws the foul. And, Evan, we were talking before the game about Lynchburg getting to the free throw line. You know, Miles Taylor does it on the most consistent basis for this Lynchburg team. But a guy that, for the role he plays, spot-up three-point shooter for the most part and rebounder, and Alex Fitch, he gets to the line a whole heck of a lot. He's just so good at, you know, the spatial awareness and can draw those fouls on threes. Well, didn't want to jinx it, but he is a buck under 90 coming into this game from free throw percentage. But... That's a result of getting to the line. We know that Fitch is one of those guys. We've seen him fouled around three-pointers a few times this season. It just shows that if you get it at the right spot and you know when your release is getting off, you can get to the strike for the easy ones. So right now it's a split, one of two at the line for Fitch. Morse out for the Maroons, and we welcome back in Clayton Gaither. Gaither, the 6'3 guard out of Charlotte, North Carolina. Providence High School. 
strong North Carolina and Mecklenburg County contingent on this Roanoke team, making the trip up north to continue collegiate hoops careers. Two for three at the line there for Fitch. Puts Lynchburg back up by a pair. We're over a quarter through our game this evening. Not necessarily a high scoring affair, but the pace has not slowed down. I'm surprised more of that clock hasn't really rolled off with how quickly we're playing a few fouls in the last couple of minutes. But back to the pace of play, and we've talked about Lynchburg's lineups. They have nine or ten different ones they're going to roll out throughout the game. Roanoke has responded well. We see the main guys we talked about coming into this game, Morgan and Kuthan, just what they have been able to do, respond. you got to communicate, especially when Lynchburg has some dif different defensive assignments throughout the game. Sutton with it, a few feet behind the three-point line right now, gives off to Ross. So looking for our first shot from DeAndre Ross. Got off to a fantastic start to the year on the offensive end. He's cooled down over the last several games, but one of those guys that you know he's got it in him, and on any moment, I mean any moment, any game, any night, it could just explode, and Ross can go off and give you 20, if not more. Uh, so you, you know, you don't necessarily know when it's coming. Lynchburg kind of waiting to see if that comes back on a consistent basis, but what better time to start than the present? Ross has it right now. Dribble crossover, defense collapses on him, and we'll get a shot clock violation. Roanoke defense has come to play. Coach Nunley gonna like that one as they force the turnover in the most difficult of ways. Go 30 seconds without allowing the shot. Just lack of awareness there from Ross and one of those situations, you see the entire Roanoke bench getting up and Adam. You think about the shot clock, that's something that could be interesting throughout this game as well. These are two teams that if they keep rolling this pace, as we see the foul on the shot, McClary will go to the line for two. You don't necessarily see those long possessions, but what Lynchburg is trying to do, they have to have some careful passing, but you can't let the rest of the seconds take off of that shot clock. Yeah, Ross on that last play, you kind of wonder, you know, he goes inside the three-point line to a spot he really likes right there in the mid-range, and you wonder if he's going to line up a shot, and then I'll give all the credit to Clayton Gaither. He steps down one step, kind of gives a swipe at the ball. It seemed to rattle Ross a little bit, and I think that's where he kind of got that lack of awareness, and then all of a sudden shot clock goes off, the referee's tapping his head, and all of a sudden you're going the other way, and then Ross gives the foul, and a perfect two for two, ties us back at 17. Uh, McClary, yeah, he's only 62 and a half percent coming in. Yeah, upped his percentage a little bit early on and then taps the ball away from Fitch, makes him waste a couple of seconds running back after it. Ross, what a shot, the step back, a dagger in the back of the net. Dr. Dre, a little freestyle right there. You know he can get to his spot whenever he wants and that's the power of athleticism. It doesn't matter what the stat sheet says, you know he can get his. On the other side, Kuthan dropping a couple of beats of his own, takes Makovic to school a little bit, just an aggressive take from Roanoke's leading score to answer back. Fitch looking for a pair in close. Roanoke rebounders ran into one another, but it is McClary that hustles it down. Kuthan in transition, he throws down the jam. Back-to-back -back buckets for the big man, and it's a quick, albeit brief, 4-0 run for the Maroons. They're back in front. 21-19. Open the window and thread it through, and Kuthin got the dunk on the other end, and it just seems like Roanoke, yes, this is a two-point game, but Roanoke has just had momentum early, especially their bench staying loud. Sutton gives it away. Rothenthal on the drive, collides with Sutton, but it's a blocking foul against the Hornets. Point guard Sutton picks up his first personal, and if you're a believer in momentum, I'm not, I wouldn't say that Lynchburg They'd captured it early on, but Roanoke seems to have stolen some away for itself, and we're about to get a platoon swap. As we had for a moment there, all five starters for Lynchburg ready to check back in. I think they will. Miles Taylor was running back over to the athletic training area. Looks like just a quick step off at the trash can. He's back in and ready to check in. Yeah, platoon swap coming. Young, Taylor, Faust, Hart, O'Connor back into the game. So the starting five back out there for Lynchburg as they go up against Morgan, Kuthan, Gaither, Rosenthal, and McClary. Rosenthal, the man at the line, hit the first and good on the second. 
So Rosenthal comes off the bench, but he's given five point boost to his ball club early on. We're at the under eight and we will step aside. Lynchburg finds itself down four after a back and forth start. See if Roanoke can keep it up coming out of the timeout. Felt like we, you guys might have missed us, so we wanted to go ahead and come back early. Just a brief 30-second timeout there. Lynchburg and Coach Scott getting a chance to talk things over. As they find themselves, I will not say a hole, but down by four in the early going. Pace of play favors Lynchburg, but Roanoke's been able to slow it down in the right ways. And by that, I mean getting to the line six times already. And what's the only thing better than getting to the line six times is making all six of your shots. And that's what Roanoke has done. Lynchburg draws the foul there. Next foul on either side sends the opposite team to the bonus. Both teams tagged with six team fouls. Hart with a little trouble getting it in. Then a good screen by O'Connor frees up Pearson Young to receive the inbounds pass. Young, a three. Had a little bit of space. High arcing shot off the back iron. And then a cheap foul goes against Jonathan Faust. We'll call that about 80 feet from the basket, and it's going to send Roanoke to the line. And you talk about the awareness plays, that, that's one sort of a negative in the bank there for Lynchburg. Well, if you're either coach, you love hustle play, right? But so many fouls early in this game. We've had 13 total that have been off ball, and that's just a situation where you know that everybody's trying to get out and make those aggressive plays, but you've got to make sure you handle business in a disciplined manner. Lynchburg quickly the other way. Faust went to his left. Yeah, a little bit dragging that back foot. That was one of those, you kind of saw it happening in slow motion in real time. Couple of miscues there against one of Lynchburg's most mentally sound players in Jonathan Faust. It is going to send him to the bench and will draw us another time out. But we'll go ahead and stay here because I think, Evan, we got a little bit of a storyline developing here. We mentioned Jason Easton. Out of the lineup tonight, he's in street clothes, Lynchburg, without him. So you kind of feel like you might need a little bit of three-point scoring. Alex Fitch came in early in the game. Elijah Davis just checked back in. On the year, uh, Evan, he's averaging just about three minutes a game. This is the earliest in a contest he has checked in. He's been out with that quad injury, nursing that, excuse me, hamstring, trying to get back to full strength. You don't want to rush that. And obviously, Lynchburg's gotten off to a pretty good start. Uh, but Elijah Davis checking into the game, 6.53 to go in the first half. Well, number 11 in gray is going to give you a lot of energy. He's one of those hype guys on the bench, and when he comes in and has production, that's just such a big plus for this Lynchburg lineup. I'm not going to say they've seemed rattled early on because I think when you're in the ODAC, you play so many different teams that you've seen every different look. But Roanoke has brought the fight to the Hill City today, and what they've been able to accomplish in these first 13, 14 minutes have been really impressive. This is a situation where if you can get these last few minutes of the first half going your way, going into the locker room with a good speech, you might just have a good blessing on the other side. And you take a look back at some of what we've seen so far, that dunk by Kuthan, he had that quick two possession stretch where he took over a little bit. Kuthan, one of the best players on this Roanoke team, one guy that through the tape really stands out. You, Evan, you and I noticed that right off the jump. He and Morgan were two guys that it's impossible to ignore in the scouting report. Uh, he's been quiet for the most part. Credit to the Lynchburg defense. He's posting up against O'Connor right now. McCleary the drive, balancing against the baseline and then hits the step back in the face of the shorter Jake Hart. That's a tough basket. McCleary looking good out of the gates here in this first half. But like you said, don't think Lynchburg looks rattled necessarily, but they looked like they were looking for a difference maker. Maybe they found it. Elijah Davis checks in, nails the triple. That's that's his calling card. Seven points a game last year. He started to explode, was one of the better three-point shooters, not only in the conference, but in the country. 
Uh, really, the only thing missing was the high, high volume, only three or four attempts per game. But he gets out and running with an early triple here tonight. Well, I think sometimes people won't understand from this basketball perspective. You have an injury. We know that the Wajah Davis, he's been battling with that hamstring. That can affect everything in your game. And, yes, he's been out for a long time, but you're thinking about just trying to get your shot back going through the normal motions, and that's why Coach Scott might have waited until later in the season to get him back. We know he's ready. Great shot to start it off. Yeah, and it's not something you want to rush, really, for two different reasons. You know, obviously, point A, you don't want to re-aggravate the injury and risk, you know, ending somebody's season prematurely. Certainly, that's, you know, the top priority as Tyler Bugs will check in as well for Lynchburg and then immediately and promptly corrals the rebound after a miss at the line from Kuthan. The other point, yeah, like you said, you think about Elijah Davis three-point specialist. You want to have your legs under you. You want to be in game shape to really be at your best from beyond the arc. But there's also a lot of confidence that goes into being a three-point scorer. And, you know, if you send him out there, he's playing big-time minutes and three balls not falling, you don't want to wreck his confidence either. So I think it's a big testament to, to where he's at in coming back. We know, you know, Coach Scott, you trust his decision-making. I don't think he's going to send you know Elijah Davis put him in a position where he's not ready to succeed so excited to see if he can give Lynchburg a boost here across the rest of this first half for as many minutes as he's able to give he cut that deficit in half it had risen up to a game high six at 25 to 19 and now Pearson Young puts Lynchburg within two if he can go a perfect pair at the line could cut this thing all the way down to a one point ball game and we do Pearson Young a pair of free ones. Lynchburg trails by just one, 5.40 to go in the first half. If you're Roanoke here, you really have to try and just keep that energy rolling. Lots of cuts outside. We see the big man, Kufin, too. He's not afraid to step outside the perimeter, but we know that Roanoke wants him operating down low. So if you're Lynchburg, you're looking at Elijah Davis, Tyler Bugs right now, you have to make sure that you don't give up that cheap foul for the bonus, but that you're making sure there's no easy path to the basket. Cutting to the basket, there goes Morgan. Late contest comes from Bugs. It was enough to alter the shot. Bugs, a big frame for this Lynchburg team. Certainly has the potential to be a big factor on both ends of the ball. He moves really well for his size. Got a nice little spin move down in close. As Davis, he made that first one from the top of the key. Now facing that pressure far away from the basket. He gives off to Taylor. Taylor gets to his left, puts his head down, and finishes in close. Lynchburg vaults back ahead at 26 to 25. Another two for Miles Taylor. Talk about Mount Taylor. That's a grown man's play getting to the rack. And that confidence we've seen throughout this season, it's not just that. He's got some discipline in his tool shed, and he is ready to use it when he's going downhill. Quickly he goes the other way. Bugs going to spot a first three of the year. He knocks it down. Two threes in quick order. The gym erupts. And this time it's Roanoke that wants a timeout. Lynchburg, after trailing 25-19, it's a 10-0 run. And Lynchburg, with four and a half to go in the first half, has retaken some of that momentum. Want to have some outdoor adventures while getting a degree at the same time? At the University of Lynchburg, we have an on-campus zip line in Rose. Plus, we offer adventure trips that cost less than a cup of coffee. And did I mention our beautiful scenery? We're a university for students looking for something more than just books. Welcome to your new adventure experience. Tino run for Lynchburg gives us our score at 29-25, 436 remaining in the first half. And we'll monitor that score. Evan, you know, you pointed out that little nugget the other day. Lynchburg undefeated when leading at the half. And on the flip side, a little bit of trouble when going into that halftime break uh, with a deficit. You talk about the maturation of a team. Lynchburg did have a pretty young team a season ago. They've grown up a lot in front of our eyes this year. And I think the first step is how can you respond after a loss? Lynchburg this year. 5-1 and one coming off losing efforts season ago. They were 4-14. Uh, I think the second part is how can you rally coming out of an early, you know, in-game adversity. And a good way to measure that 
is wins after trailing at the half. Lynchburg's still trying to put that together. But again, the easiest thing is you get out in front and you hold on to it. And Lynchburg, despite that last three from Roanoke, does still lead it by one. It's 29-28 as the clock rolls under four minutes to play in the first. Great youth and experience on this squad as you see Taylor trying to get to the bucket. But that's something that throughout this season expected to change in the ODAC slate. And we know that Lynchburg's ready. Tough take from Pearson Young. Checked his feet at the arc. Goes strong to his right. Gets his man in the air on the pump fake. Finishes in close. Lynchburg's majority of its scoring, take away a couple of shots maybe from DeAndre Ross and Miles Taylor, has come either in very close to the basket, those high percentage looks, or open looks from three. Really good shot selection early on, uh, it, you know, at least in my perspective here for this Lynchburg team. You, you feel like the biggest thing to clean up is what we just saw, the, the fouls are, are stacking up a little bit against Lynchburg. We're at Roanoke as well with seven at this point. Uh, but 16 total, I guess in a, in a fast paced back and forth game, you do kind of expect that. Uh, but, but Lynchburg obviously sending Roanoke to the bonus. I believe it was right around seven minutes to go in the first half. Well, think about Roanoke's shot selection too, because the mid range has really been kind to them throughout this game. Saw Rosenthal come off the bench, he's hit a few threes. But if you're Lynchburg in the second half, I think one of the keys to the game has to be defending that mid range. And a lot of that's one on one play. So you're thinking about some of those key defenders like Pearson Young. Not fouling, but still giving enough to really just aggravate these Roanoke people, Roanoke players on offense. Second one had a little bit of drama to it, but both will drop at the free throw line for Clayton Gaither. Cuts the lead back down to one. Gaither, his first points of the game. DeAndre Ross going to pick up the opportunity for an extra one. He gets downhill, gets to the basket, finishes through the contact. We'll see if he can tack on the free throw to respond to two with three. Lynchburg back up by a trio of points. DeAndre Ross coming off the bench tonight, making his impact known early on. Four points, could make it five here at the line, a Lynchburg team. We're seeing some of that depth early on. Sam, think about this too. We talked about one-on-one -on, -one on the other end. I think Dre Ross might be one of the toughest people to guard on this Lynchburg squad. Just that first one-two step getting to the bucket, he can do it well. Absolutely, but we do get another one of those cheap fouls. It'll send Roanoke to the double bonus. Still three minutes left in this first half. Tyler Bugs picks up the cheap one. That time about 90 feet away from the basket. It'll send Kuthan to the line now. Kuthan, like we said, had a really good stretch earlier. He's got six points. Only shot he's missed tonight has been at the line, but he'll get two opportunities here regardless. Not true on the first one. Clangs off the front of the iron. And for Kuthan, who entered tonight shooting and making about two out of every three, it's been a tough 0 for 2 start on the free ones. Still 8 for 11 for this Roanoke team, so not shooting poorly. You think about their style of play, how they try to get to the bucket. That's something that if it isn't clicking, it's going to be a really rough night for the Maroons. But overall, still bringing the fight to Lynchburg, and we've seen it really unwind as Dre Ross can't connect on the three. Good move by Ross to shake off his defender on the step back, just unable to finish on the shot. Almost got the friendly roll on the home baskets, but not quite. Pearson Young picks up foul number 11 for Lynchburg in this first half. He fouls Morgan going up, and it really does feel like Morgan and Kuthan, we've gotten them in bursts, but you wonder if Roanoke, you know, you talk halftime adjustments, maybe trying to find those guys on a little bit more of a consistent basis. I mean, the two of them average about 27 points between the pair uh, coming in. It, it, Credit to the Lynchburg defense making life a little harder for them. Uh, but you just wonder if maybe first things first, you try to get some more touches. Well, listen to Roanoke in their offense. They know they want to look for Kuthan down low. You're going to see Morgan operating at that point guard position. But that's something where you just have to exploit the loopholes in this Lynchburg defense. I mean, in traditional man, you're going to see these situations where you have those little windows and just not able to always come away with it. I think Lynchburg's bench isn't going to like this call. Bugs can't believe it, but Roanoke is going to maintain possession under the bucket. That's a tough one to check in real time, as it always is. You know, did Bugs 
just not corral it and knock it out himself, or did somebody poke it out between his two hands? And at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Roanoke has the ball, and at the end of the day, that, that's all anybody really cares about. Good rebound there from Elijah Davis. So Lynchburg does get out of that one. Scott Free, he's going to take triple number two of the day with a hand in his face, 11 on 11. Morgan, great contest, better shot from Elijah Davis. He's two for two from deep. Roanoke wants to push, try to catch Lynchburg's defense napping. Credit to Coach Scott's squad. They were ready for it. But how about Elijah Davis, already a season high six? He checked in early and he's made his mark. Hasn't left the game since coming in at the six and a half minute mark. And two for two, the three point specialist, true to form in the minutes he's given so far. Well, those shots may only be three points, but it seems like every time he's thrown it down, it's just such an ejection into Turner Gymnasium. You think about one of those guys who not only is coming back and getting these minutes, but is already somebody who can bring energy to the gym. And so Elijah Davis, with his experience, if he can carry that into the second half, it's going to make it a really tough climb for Roanoke if they go down. Kuthin shooting his fourth and fifth free throws of the evening for Roanoke as a team, 14 and 15. So those are starting to stack up. And check that 15 and 16 for the Maroons. And he makes good on both. So he raises his personal percentage up over 50%. And Roanoke, like you said, Evan, as a team, phenomenal at the line, 12 of 16 so far. What's well, a result of their offense just being democratic? Everybody has to get a touch on the ball, and when you're opening up those players down low, you're going to see a few plays like that. Young knocks it down, a hand in his face, some contested jumpers the last two times down the floor for Lynchburg. Thought there might have been a little contact on Young. I think he may have agreed a little point to his defender on the way back down the floor and then just a little bit of an unforced air there miscommunication between a pair of maroons it was morgan and fayed fayed will get hit with the turnover but those are always tough ones to, to call you know is it maybe morgan was supposed to be in a different spot did he get the turnover you know tough one just a miscommunication between teammates but lynchburg going to try to make them pay open look for hart tough rebound from Pearson Young, they didn't box him out. And then Jake Hart trying to make good on the extra opportunity. He is unable to turn over Lynchburg, going the other way. Roanoke got hit with two shots going up for Lynchburg, but they stop them both, but still a heck of a rebounding effort from Pearson Young. Well, Hart just got that arm extended a little too much for the officials liking, but going back to that last play, the turnover on Roanoke's end, Lynchburg, has 19 points off turnovers per game. So not only are they turning you over, but they're finding ways to capitalize. And throughout this game right now, Roanoke sitting at seven turnovers. It just seems like Lynchburg has to really use those possessions in the second half to kind of keep the clock rolling. Great take inside the three-point arc by McClary. Put Bugs in that ever tough position as a big man down low. Do you step up and remove a rebounder from under the basket to try and contest? Or do you kind of just get caught in the middle, try to do a little bit of both? And multitasking's not easy to do. McClary hits the little floater, a beautiful shot. Another step back for Ross, again too strong. And we're going the other way. Elijah Davis tried to hustle down the rebound, but Roanoke wins it away nonetheless. Lynchburg leading by a pair, 38-36 with 34 seconds to go. Does appear Lynchburg will get the opportunity for the last shot of the first half. No two for one opportunity, I guess, unless Roanoke wanted to chuck it the length of the floor and jack a shot up. That is not what they elected to do. And I gotta say, probably a smart call here. If you're Lynchburg, have to have some straight up defense. Don't want to give Roanoke some easy shots going into the half. Hart guarding McClary tight, far away from the basket. McClary, a good first half. Rosenthal top of the key. McClary late in the shot clock and really makes Lynchburg pay. Picture perfect position from Roanoke and then a premature shot from DeAndre Ross. So for a Lynchburg team that on the year has been fantastic in end of half and beginning of half scenarios, got beat a little bit on this particular night, January 10th. Well. Sam, I'll tell you this, McClary has came to play. Nine points tied for the team lead with Kuthin for Roanoke, but that's just the type of play that can really hurt you going into the locker room. We know Coach Scott and Coach Nunley, two of the best 
and we're going to see what adjustments they make. But we know this is far from finished. Roanoke up one going into the half. Lynchburg held scoreless for roughly the final two minutes of that first half, and Roanoke manages to steal away the lead with about four seconds left on the first half timer. They lead it 39 to 38 after 20 minutes. We got another 20 to go. We'll be back in a few moments for some halftime stats and analysis. And I've been told a very special, we'll say extra addition to our halftime show. We'll get your word from our player to watch, Miles Taylor. He's been playing phenomenal on the basketball court. I think we got a pretty fun interview for you with our very own Tim LaDuca. That's coming up at the half. A lot to look forward to and another 20 minutes of basketball, 15 minutes from now. from the Outdoor Leadership Program gave a presentation at a teaching and learning resources conference here about getting his program more involved on the academic side of campus. I mentioned uh, computers and mapping and he mentioned caving and eventually we came up with the idea of mapping caves. So the week before we were able to learn how to use the instruments kind of like on a flat surface and just kind of get a hang of how they work but it was really amazing how once we got in the cave, it was a completely different experience using them. It was unique. It got most of us out of our comfort zone, kind of gave us a new experience, a new taste of something new. But I think the most difficult parts were getting the lighting right. Um, you had to read the instruments with the headlamps while keeping your eye pointed on the plot point. This allowed them to actually literally get their hands dirty, uh, collecting data, conducting measurements and putting all that together in the form of a map and doing it in a, in a place that's never been mapped before. Thing that I've taken from Westover is probably my interactions with faculty. I started working with Dr. Fryer. He's always available for help and he makes sure that I get to do the experiments and not just be there while he does them. I didn't want to limit myself when I came here to just taking the prereqs for med school. I wanted to get a full well-rounded education and I definitely found that in the Westover program. It's given me the opportunity to keep playing soccer at a competitive level. 
Um, but also it's given me the ability to be a student and to pursue other activities such as EMS. hundred percent do Westover because it's not something they're going to regret and it's going to be a lot of work but so is everything else. It's just going to help build their education that they've already had and make them a better person for it. When you come to the University of Lynchburg to earn a master's degree in athletic training, you'll spend time in the classroom, but you'll also spend a lot of time in our top-notch facilities learning from athletic trainers and working closely with our student athletes. In the Graduate Cadaver Lab, you'll learn about the human body in the best way possible by actually studying the human body. This will provide a foundation to make you a much better athletic trainer. In the athletic training laboratory, you'll get hands-on experience, practicing your skills, applying concepts from the classroom, and working with faculty on research projects. It's also where our hydrotherapy facilities are. This space is also used by students for studying and practicing skills outside of class time. In the sports medicine clinic in Turner Gymnasium, you'll work with student athletes from more than 20 NCAA Division III sports teams helping get them back to practice and into the game as soon as possible. As an athletic training student, you're a big part of the success of our sports teams and the success of the local athletic teams. We see this relationship as a win-win situation. You learn, and that helps us win. Welcome back inside the Hill City, the Battle of 460. We're going to go ahead and put a trademark on that, Evan. I love it. I love it. Love a good rivalry in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. Sam Graham, Evan Gates alongside you. 39-38, a hard-fought battle across the first half. And, and several things to unpack, and we're going to do our best to do so in a concise manner here because, like I said, a loaded halftime show on tap for us tonight. Uh, you know, we'll start off just kind of looking at the numbers. You know, not a lot jumps off the screen, like you said. I mean, when you have an evenly played battle, there's not going to be a lot of large disparities. So we'll try to pick out some of the ones that we have seen. I, I think it's been physical, right? 21 fouls on both teams. Uh, that's probably where we want to start. And then we'll also touch on the return of Elijah Davis and some unlikely three-point scores here for Lynchburg. Uh, Tyler Bugs, Mason Makovic, uh, but Elijah Davis checking in, giving a big boost off the bench with a pair of threes. Well, it goes back to what we started with. Anybody can come out and have a day on this Lunchburg team because the bench is so big. You have guys in different roles with different lineups. I think that's why so many people have these perimeter looks, but you have to still expect that Cam O'Connor, one of those guys who can take threes, we've seen everybody on this roster get some looks. You have to expect they're going to come in due timing and 
for a squad that in Roanoke that had 22 second chance points versus Lynchburg last season. They have four today. The Hornets don't have any. So it has just been back and forth, as you said earlier, really a track meet of a first half. Yeah, and sometimes stats can be misleading, right? It's really interesting, not a whole lot of second chance points today. Well, we've seen some offensive rebounds. The defense has been played at a really high level. I know it's 39-38, but heck, we had, you know, what, 68 total possessions across that first half between these two teams. So it's been a fast-paced battle. I imagine that would continue here into the second half. And we'll take a look to you know, where the shots have kind of been coming from and more specifically where the makes have been coming from because I do think several things stand out when you look at the shot chart for Lynchburg. It's all been centered there in the middle of the court, whether that's from deep, whether it's in close, a good variety of where the shots are coming from, but kind of right down Main Street for the Hornets. For Roanoke, nothing on the far side. So Lynchburg, nothing in the corners. Roanoke, nothing in the far corner. We'll see if that changes here coming out. But, you know, when you when you think about corners for Lynchburg, I think there's one guy that jumps out. It really makes a lot of his money from that corner, whether it's far or near. That's Cam O'Connor. Well, Cam O'Connor picked up two fouls early. He only played six minutes in the first half. And maybe that's a guy you get him back in the second, get some more minutes from one of your top players. And maybe the score shakes out a little bit differently. Uh, Miles Taylor, another guy that picked up two personals in the first half. Well, here's the good thing about having so many possessions. It doesn't matter that it's a one-point game because the run is waiting for one of these squads. I think that's what both coaches are talking about in the locker room, just understanding you're in this game. Every single ODAC game this season is going to toss and turn. You're not going to have these one-way battles. And so coming out in the first five or so minutes of the second half, it's about building that momentum quickly. And as you said, just trying to get those new looks. We know Lynchburg hasn't gone to the corner. Well, Roanoke may be looking at the other side of the court. Well, Roanoke really controlled the end of that first half, but it's one of those things. You go into the halftime locker room, you say, we're pretty close to a tie game. Let's look at this as a whole new game. If you're Lynchburg, you got to come out and say, they won going into the half. We got to win it coming out of the half. We mentioned Lynchburg. There's sort of, you know, different coaches call it different things, but we'll say the middle four, last two minutes of the first half, first two minutes of the second. Lynchburg's done a really good job of owning that, especially at home. This is a good team at home, five and two coming into tonight. Roanoke, we've yet to mention, still looking for their first road win on the year. I think they've looked great. Uh, like It's hard to win ODAC games on the road. It's hard to win ODAC games in general. Uh, they've put their best foot forward and trying to play spoiler here for a Lynchburg team that's feeling pretty good about itself as we get into the January month. Uh, there's a lot more we can unpack probably from that first half, but I think we'll be able to do a lot of that as we get into the second two and a half minutes until the second half gets underway. And you know, who likes more ads? You know, we love seeing about Lynchburg, but let's really get right at the heart of it. Let's hear what Miles Taylor has to say. It's the newest edition of Lynchburg Reels with Miles Taylor and our very own Sports Information Director, Tim LaDuca. Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Miles Taylor with uh, Lynchburg Men's Basketball, and you're watching Lynchburg Reels. Okay, Miles, you played for the ODAC Championship as a freshman up and down seasons the past couple years. What's it been playing for Lynchburg these past four years? Yeah, I've loved Lynchburg. Uh, Coach Scott is uh, always taking me under his wing. Um, always giving the best advice. Uh, the guys here are, are really phenomenal, so loved it. You're leading the team in scoring, coming off the bench. What's been your secret this year for shooting the ball? Just uh, being confident, coming off the bench, being being aggressive, uh, attacking the rim, doing what I do best. Who's the toughest teammate to guard in practice? The toughest teammate to guard in practice would be Pearson Young. Why is that? Because he fouls. <laughs> do you have a nickname? MT. Who's got the best nickname on the team? Matthew Johnson. What is it? Vanilla Gorilla. <laughs> what is your height listed on the website? 6'5". Is that accurate? No. <laughs> what are you actually? You don't have to tell anybody. <laughs> All right. Favorite restaurant in Lynchburg? Shakers, for sure. Here we go. I'm going to have you just real quick give me a rating out of 10 for these things. Ready? OK. Stanley Cups. Eight. Eight? You like him that much? It's a Stanley Cup. Okay. Long bus rides. Zero. Dunking. Eight. Taco Bell. Zero. Iced coffee. Nine. Plaid shirts. Two. Sunglasses inside. Seven. Homework. Five. Disney World. Ten. Besides us, who has the coolest logo in the ODAC? We have the best logo. 
besides us, Mary Washington. We're on the O day. What am I talking about? <laughs> Washington and Lee. That's a good answer. Who's going to the Super Bowl? Pittsburgh Steelers. What song are we putting on this video? Birthday Dance by... <laughs> Sorry. The Vanilla Gorilla, I mean, come on, does it get much better than that? We call him Matty J here at LHSN, but Matt Johnson, that's got to be one of the best nicknames I've seen. Add it to sports reference, basketball reference. Let's see it. Matt Johnson, the Vanilla Gorilla. Uh, back to basketball here, and glad that Evan and I did not go with plaid shirts tonight. A two out of ten there from Miles Taylor. No love for the flannel. I don't know, but are we talking just plaid in the sense of, like, dress shirts, or are we anti-flannel, too, for Miles? What do you think? See, I don't know if his closet is like his arsenal on the yeah. court, but maybe maybe he gets a little deep into that. Hey, black shirts, too. You got Roanoke in the black jersey, so maybe we would have been going the wrong way on both directions. Yeah, and a high rating there for iced coffee. Tough look with these cold temperatures these last couple days. And we have to introduce Miles to some hot coffee as well. Uh, another quick start here to the second half. Sam Graham, Evan Gates, Roanoke, Lynchburg. Uh, all right, that's our roll call. Maroons lead at 39-38. Let's check that. McCleary took a little bit of issue to that. The lead bounces back up to four for Roanoke. McCleary, you said it, Evan. He came to play. Uh, that is continuing into the second half. He's the first player in double figures on either side for what's been an extremely balanced attack offensively for both teams. Well, he's averaging just under 10 points a game, but he is every single time that he gets the ball just really been confident with that shot. And Pearson Young on the other end, not an easy task as it's off the window, can't connect. Young leans into that one too strong off the back of the glass. Not a bad shot, he got in close. Lynchburg did a good job of that in that first half. Does not get the friendly roll. Kuthan, tough turnaround, good defense by O'Connor. It wanted to go in. Morse, the put back and back in. Roanoke has their fans up on their feet and a tough start to the second half for Roanoke. We're not through our entirety of our middle four yet, but right now I'm gonna give the advantage to Roanoke. We'll see what the next 17 seconds look like for Lynchburg. Well, this is just one of those situations where the Maroons, they came out hustling, and those are the types of plays, especially rebounds. They can go either way. You have got to be aggressive early, and this is a squad in Lynchburg that we have seen throughout this season, 9-2 and two after leading at the half, 0-4 oh after trailing at the half, and if you just let it get away early, well, then you don't have anything to fight for those final 10 minutes, so I think Coach Scott, you're only a minute and a half plus into the second half. It's a very smart timeout. Yeah, on that last possession, Roanoke picks up its sixth offensive rebound of the game. Again, only six second chance points off of that. But both teams, I mean, they're getting opportunities. They're getting that second bite at the apple. They're keeping these sentences going. But yeah, both teams not on a regular basis capitalizing off those second chance points. Maybe that's something Roanoke is able to do here in the second half. Certainly a good start in that area. Well, you talked about this game being one to get as well. This is the middle of that conference schedule. You're sort of ushering out a break. This is a Roanoke squad that has four games at home after this one. They're not going to be on the road until January 27th. So I think they can sense the energy, hence the reason they came out firing. And Coach Nunley is telling these guys, look, we have some games coming up that we're going to get wins in. Start one and five. Well, forget that because you still have all of January and February to play. Lots of ODAC action left. The six-point lead at 44 to 38 is tied for the largest of the game for Roanoke. They led it at 25 to 19, and Evan, after that, Lynchburg responded out of a timeout with a 10-0 run. We'll see if history repeats itself here. Hornets looking for three with Young. Bang, right wide open from the middle of the court. It holds true. That first half trend carries into the second, and Pearson Young adds three points to his tally. Young Good. wild and free from the top of the key. And it's just, Pearson Young's one of those guys, you're not gonna see him on the stat sheet a whole lot, but on defense, just 
so good at aggravating everybody. And you see Lynchburg, they went into that 1-3-1 and they're getting a very different look. And it's an interesting look when Lynchburg goes 1-3-1. Well, you know, you and I kind of noticed this, that something we hadn't noticed in real time, but you know, our film study for this game, going back and looking at it, Jonathan Faust plays that top of the 1-3-1. He's so athletic and he had a phenomenal defensive possession there. That's two quick wins out of the timeout here for Lynchburg. Try to give the dribble handoff and seal off from O'Connor again. Shots just off the mark this time around. Morse battling for that offensive rebound. Credit to O'Connor making him work for it, but a strong rebound there for Morse in the far corner, as well as to not step out of bounds or travel. Kuthan trying to back down O'Connor. The physicality continues, but before he could set up the shot, he walked with it. A turnover for Roanoke and another defensive stop for Lynchburg. Well, Connor has had his hands full down low. Great job of just staying cool and composed. And now you get this opportunity to go back. You're down just three, and you've gotten a few good looks to start off. Pearson Young's been around the perimeter, so maybe trying to get to the bucket. Pass from Jake Hart was deflected on the way to its destination. And Lynchburg just won for its last seven field goals dating back to the first half. But you don't feel too bad about where you're at, only a three-point deficit. And Pearson Young has the last made field goal in this game with that three. That carried him into double digits at 11. So Pearson Young, leading scorer for Lynchburg at the moment. He's looked good on both ends tonight. O'Connor going to try a three, lines one up. That methodical release, but man, can he stroke it from deep. 50% on the year. Doesn't take a whole lot. Just got a great look at it. Far wing three is up and in on the other side from Zach Rosenthal. He came off of the bench, but he's been huge for Roanoke as well. He's up to 11 points, and the scoring starting to heat up a little bit on both sides. That balanced attack starting to roll itself into double figures. Lynchburg going to look to answer as they once again trail by six. Well, that's a coach's dream, too, because so many passes around the perimeter, no dribbles. Any sign that you can get those shots, especially with Rosenthal waiting to release, you know you're going to get some good opportunities. After having 21 total fouls in the first half, it took us three minutes and 56 seconds to draw the first one in the second. And a good person to draw it is Miles Taylor. We mentioned doing a really good job at that, and I think that's a direct correlation of his intentionality and in trying to get right up to the basket. He does so there. And the free throw line his success there has really been improving as well so it's clear you know a guy that you know we know likes to spend a lot of time in the gym he's seems to have been working on that free throw percentage I mean this is a guy that you know down the stretch talking about a potential 50 40 90 guy he's got the 50 and the 40 it's just can you raise that free throw percentage up to 90 might not be enough runway left only nine games left in the regular season after this contest and he does split them at the line there, maybe an announcer's jinx on my part. Rosenthal splits a couple of defenders, but turns it over, looking for the drop-off pass down low, running the other way. Young thought about a three, puts it on the floor, gets in the air, kick out to Taylor. He thought twice. Again, Lynchburg rotating well, creating some spacing for itself, but then the point guard, Jake Hart, trying to back his man under the basket draws the offensive foul. That one was really close to being inside the circle as well, but that's an example of Lynchburg's defense, this 1-3-1 one, one, sort of flustering Roanoke in the first few possessions. That defense can turn into quick offense and you might have a step or two ahead of your opponents when you're running in transi transition, hence the reason Lynchburg is so good at getting those points off turnovers. So if you're Roanoke here, you gotta use the corners and really be smart about who you're giving the ball to. Offensive possession that had a lot of flow and rhythm to it. Turns out with a goose egg, a donut in the scoring column, and Roanoke makes some pay. Another two for Rosenthal. Uh, Roanoke didn't go to the mid-range a ton in that first half. They go to it there, and Rosenthal makes Lynchburg pay. Taylor picks it up off the floor, nails the three-point shot, but drew a foul before the attempt. I'm sure if we asked him, he'd probably be perfectly happy to trade him that foul for the three points he almost came up with. Instead, barring a change after this conversation between officials, should be side out here for Lynchburg, far side. Looks like referees might want to talk this one over. McCleary having a little trouble 
trying to get some clarification, but another off ball foul, another one of those rebounds, just those longer shots that we've seen throughout the game. That was just an instance of getting a little too rough and rugged, but Roanoke up eight. You got just over 15 minutes left. This is where Lynchburg has to start turning it on. You saw Miles Taylor still in a good position to get those three pointers, but you also have to be looking at that rack attack, trying to find your way into the paint. Pivotal point in the game. Yeah, I'm assuming a lot of contact you see there, sort of midpoint, central point of your screen there. Faust being guarded. At, is that Morse, I believe? He's giving him some close defense. You wonder if maybe that's what they're looking at. Yeah, no contact with Taylor. So, again, that's almost frustrating if you're Lynchburg. It's like, yeah, you know, I don't think he really was all that over him. We'll just – don't worry about the foul. We can always pick that up later. we got 15 minutes to go. We'll just take three points and, you know, call it a day. But – Well, oops. listen, I don't think that our officials have done anything poor today, but it just seems like – they never miss the calls you want them to miss. And they're going to give Lynchburg the three. The fans love it. I'm not sure exactly what they were looking at over there. There's no replay monitor unless they were watching the live stream. Uh, you know, hopefully they were. I think we do a pretty good job with our finished product here on LHSN. You take one more look at it. Yeah, they're going to say no foul. Basket counts. Of course, it's still Lynchburg ball. So let's see. They're going to say a foul on Marcus Morgan, but we're going to get the three for Taylor, and it's Lynchburg ball under its own basket. I'm not sure, Evan. I'm a little lost. I'm not going to lie. The only thing I can figure is maybe they said the foul occurred after the shot. That would be my guess. We'll have to get some communication during the break, but either way, Lynchburg almost granted a free possession here, a chance to make it a one-possession game. No technical, no flagrant assess, so just sort of an odd situation here. Lynchburg does burn it. Jake Hart got ahead of himself, travels with the basketball, and uh, Lynchburg turns it over for just the ninth time this game. And I say just purely because of the turnover margin. Obviously, they are on pace to have more turnovers than their season average, but they've turned over Roanoke 11. And as much as you don't want to rack up 20 turnovers, you can live with it if your opponent has 25 or 30. So... Lynchburg winning the turnover margin right now. The defense has been really solid coming out of the break. An adjustment from Coach Scott dropping back into that zone, and it's worked out so far. At times, teams can get burned on that 1-3-1. Lynchburg having some success with it right now. We see side out, too, and they're going to go back to man. But what's so tough about this 1-3-1 defense is that you take away that pass to the middle, and so you're either lobbing to the corner or trying to get some quick switches. And what Faust does up front is just really disrupting those Roanoke point guards, keeping them away from making that easy pass. I think we need to put Faust on the ball on those side outs, maybe 100% of them. <laughs> that jumping ability is just incredible. I can't imagine having a lot of success throwing it over him. So we'll get some clarification on that last foul. His foul occurred while Miles Taylor was in the shooting motion. So, yeah, in essence, we'll say foul sort of occurring after the shot. That's why Lynchburg gets the ball back. And sort of a wonky sequence of events here, really from start to finish on this possession. We didn't really get to touch on the double whammy that Jake Hart got hit with. He takes the brute of that contact, but also the blocking foul going against him on that drive by Morgan. Great aggressive, you, know, you like the aggression, you like the intentionality. Morgan, a great take to the basket and, and does draw the foul. Then Pearson Young, far corner, jumps up, contests the perimeter shot, gets the block. Taylor nearly comes down with the offensive rebound. Instead, ricochets off him right into the lap of Rosenthal, who draws another foul. So just a tough look for Lynchburg. Haven't done a lot wrong on this possession, but nonetheless could be staring a seven-point deficit in the face once again when it's all said and done. Sam, I don't know how Pearson Young got his hand on it. He was almost going out of bounds when he made that block. But as you said, Rosenthal, right place, right time. Roanoke's up seven. We're going to see a new look as Makovic steps back into the ball game. And Landon Sutton is going to be at the helm, manning the point. Yeah, and listen, Lynchburg only averages two blocks a game as a team. But the, the ability at altering perimeter shots. And I don't just mean getting a hand in the face of a three-point shooter. Blocking those shots is almost unlike anything I've ever seen. Jonathan Faust and Pearson Young 
leading the way in that category. Hey, nothing's free even from deep against this Lynchburg team. Well, teams are shooting just 28% from beyond the perimeter against the Hornets, and the closeouts have been so strong. But we've seen Roanoke today a few times where Rosenthal and company have been able to get out. How about Taylor jumping up to defend the shot of Morse and close? Reminder, Morse, six foot seven. Pearson Young, six foot three. So a four inch height advantage. Pearson Young said, that's okay, I'll meet you at the rim. But once again, another offensive rebound collected by Roanoke. Seventh of the game. We'll see if we had a deflection here. Looks like we did, so we'll try again on the inbounds from under the basket here for Roanoke. Morgan again will be the inbounder. Looks like Young might have gotten his foot on it too, so we'll reset 19 on the shot clock. You don't want a quick hitter in the paint here, and we saw it was a great job down low by Morse just getting those first couple of steps to the rim, but again, also have to watch those fouls. Little trouble getting it in for Morgan. He finds Fayette far side. Some good run for Fayette in this evening's game. Morgan has it stripped on the way up, but then Sutton trying to run it down before it goes out of bounds. It looked from our angle like it might have gone off of Morgan anyway, but Sutton is the last to touch it. And another opportunity here, an extended possession. Pearson Young gets airborne again. Makovic and Morgan get tied up. Then the football pass and the finish gets everybody on their feet. Jonathan Faust runs the floor, gets to the basket, and finishes through the contact. That is a momentum play for Lynchburg. Well, it's getting a little Fausty outside. It's just heating up in the gym. And Faust just right spot, right time. How many times have we seen him just get to the rim and get up? He's one of those guys. He knows where to be. He knows how to get it done. Faust and Pearson Young connect on that play. They have put their stamp early on through about six and a half minutes of this second half. If nothing else, just with effort, hustle, and athleticism. Altering shots, jumping up after loose balls, running the floor. They've been great to start the second half, helping Lynchburg stay afloat. The deficit's only four. It's grown to as much as eight. Lynchburg hanging around and trying to get some help from its home crowd. It's a good crowd in Turner Gymnasium tonight as more and more teams and students make their way onto campus. And first day of classes draw nearer. We'll see if they can really get into this game down the stretch. Makovic alters the shot in close, but another offensive rebound tracked down and then the hustle play is made by McClary. No Lynchburg players converged on the ball. It was classic moment of you got it, no, you got it, no, nobody's got it. McClary had it and Roanoke draws another foul. And from a coaching standpoint, you see Coach Scott right now kind of rubbing his head. Tough look here on some of these defensive possessions here for Lynchburg. Well, I think the thing that Coach Scott is thinking too is that they were there. The ball was loose. You had so many opportunities, and yet the Maroons are still finding their way to the free throw line, still getting these opportunities. And in a game where it's just a couple of possessions, you really got to click in those. And we've seen Lynchburg with this 1-3-1. They're not trying to trap. They're not trying to get you right at half court. They want to disrupt, and they want to get the interceptions on the passes. And so if Lynchburg keeps doing that, you just got to capitalize. Morse goes two for two at the line. He is up to six points on the day. Free throw shooting as a team is 14 of 18. Great at the line has been Roanoke. And then a strong take, trying to split two defenders. Uh, Taylor never actually got the shot off, but did get up in the air. So a shooting foul against Roanoke, their fourth as a team. will send Taylor to the line once more, where he is one for two on the day. Ten points for Miles Taylor. One of two Hornets in double figures. Pearson Young, the other, leading the way with 11. That first half was very free-flowing and transition. Seems like we've just been caught up in traffic these last few minutes, and that might play to Lynchburg's advantage down six. You got to say that hesitantly because you know they're just a couple buckets from getting back in this ball game. But Miles Taylor again just powering his way to the rim. Free throws. Roanoke was 14 of 18. Lynchburg's got to hold their weight on the other side. Morgan checks back in for the Maroons after Taylor's first free throw was everything but in. Rattles out. He's had two of those early on this evening. Tries to go for the split, unable to. Lynchburg trying to come up with an offensive rebound, and they finally do. A little drama on the way there as Makovic 
And Jonathan Faust played a little game, but don't let it touch the floor. How about another three for Pearson Young? He's up to 14. He wants to hear it from the crowd. The crowd's giving it to him. And once again, Lynchburg cuts it down to three. Hornets, their sixth make from deep. Check that seventh three-pointer of the game. Pearson Young just a little too aggressive on that closeout. We've seen all game long Zach Rosenthal ready to shoot the three when he gets it. And Young, I think that shot would have been off the mark with how high he got on that jump. But on the other side, still got the three to make it a one possession game. See Rosenthal try to get the Maroons to creep their way back up to six. Rosenthal's been fantastic. He's been great at the line as well, four for four. Entering this trip, he's good on the first to make it five for five, and he's up to 17 points off the bench for this Roanoke team. Put an asterisk, though, next to off the bench. He's played 19 minutes in this game. Six players that have played 19 or more for Roanoke tonight. We have still only seen 10 guys enter the game for this Roanoke team. Check that, only nine. So that's right about what we expected, maybe not the exact 10 guys we expected. Rosenthal leading the way. He's got that good shot from deep. He's gotten to the free throw line, had a good clip, seven attempts there on the night. So scoring in a variety of ways, and he does balloon that lead back up to six. Landon Sutton checks back in for Lynchburg. He joins Makovic, Trey Gillenwater into the game for the first time. Faust and Young round out the lineup for Lynchburg. It's Sutton that quickly gets to the hoop and harms the opponent, scores in close. He's on the board for the first time today. Pearson Young running up to try and pick that pass off before it got to Rosenthal. Kind of sold out for it, but not without effect as it seemed like it made Rosenthal stutter after coming back down to the ground. He walks, and Lynchburg trailing by four can make it a one-possession game with a good possession here. Sutton scored. He was the 11th Hornet to score this game, and Roanoke, as you said, have just played 10. That shows that contrast of styles. It shows that one might not be better than the other, but those fresh legs in these last 12 or so minutes are really going to have to factor in if you're Lynchburg. You want to keep running. Smart play by Gillenwater as Makovic draws Kuthan far away from the basket out to the three-point line. Gillenwater goes to him immediately with Kuthan on Makovic's back, and Makovic picks up the foul. So a smart decision there by Gillenwater. We didn't see much before the break, but tell you what, he can give this Lynchburg team some points in a hurry. We'll see if he can do so tonight. Gillenwater, 16 points versus Mount St. Mary, one of those games that has occurred since we have talked to you last so many games down in Florida and then on the road for a couple before coming back to Turner, but he's just one of those guys who is really emerging, and we've said that about so many of Lynchburg's players. Makovic turns it over on one end, gets the turnover on the other end. Another run out ends with a lay-in. Little finger roll by Jonathan Faust. The lead for Roanoke is two. Lynchburg hanging around on its home court. Both teams really feeling like a win would be nice on a cold January night. Might warm you up a little bit. And you talk about two teams that look like they want it. I mean, both leaving it all out there, hustling hard. You know, you wonder sometimes who the biggest rivals are. We were having this conversation the other day, Evan. You know, who's the biggest rival, you know, for Lynchburg within the ODAC? Who are the biggest three? And, you know, it's really hard to pinpoint because it kind of feels like everybody's a rival. You know, other than Guilford, every school located in Virginia. And this Roanoke, certainly no love lost in this particular matchup. Like you said, it's the 53rd all-time meeting, and Roanoke is trying to steal the show on the road and pick up its first road victory of the season. They lead it by five with 11.01 to go. We'll take a quick break and be back to the action in a few moments by telling you our score. It's Roanoke 60, Lynchburg 55. school that could provide me with the athletics, academics to pursue my career, a wind symphony to pursue my passion for music, and really have a nice uh, general atmosphere. The professors here are really unique. They, their background and their passion for teaching. It's really a place where you can explore. Uh, it, Lynchburg gives you the opportunity to fail, but also get back up in that period of time and, and learn from your mistakes. I can make 
these mistakes within the school environment, but also uh, with the support of other friends and be ready for the real world when you graduate. Lynchburg 9 and 6, Roanoke 7 and 7. They find themselves in different spots in the ODAC pecking order coming into tonight. You mentioned it's got that rivalry feel, these two teams given everything they've got as Roanoke tries to play spoiler. It's Lynchburg coming off that big win on the road against Shenandoah. Roanoke trying to get right in ODAC play, improve to 2 and 5, and just feel a little bit better about itself as it really progresses into the meat in the middle of this conference schedule. Every win means a lot. Every one you can steal away from home means even more. Lynchburg right now faced with a little bit of adversity. Five minutes, excuse me, 11 minutes to go, five points down. See how this team that we've mentioned, a lot of maturation that we've seen in front of our eyes this year, see if that can turn into a come from behind effort. Gillenwater. Puts up a three, draws nothing, last to touch it. Never mind, you get a foul on the floor, believe it went against Morgan. He was guarding Elijah Davis, who checks back in. Davis gave Lynchburg a couple of triples in the first half. He's got six off of those two threes. Can he give him a boost after checking in here in the second? He's guarded closely right now by Morgan. He's gonna take the deep three, contact on the way down. Yep, gotta let him have the space for the follow through. Coach Nunley not too happy with it. But that is the rule. Elijah Davis going to get three free ones. Man, hands on heads on this Roanoke bench, and that's just one of those fouls late in the shot clock. That's just really bailing Davis out. But nonetheless, that free throw line can be an equalizer. He's going to knock down the first. And going back to your point about the ODAC, you know, top two teams in the conference are the top two in the nation. We have Randolph Macon as ranked. Virginia Wesleyan getting votes as well. Every team has a conference loss thus far, and that's something you don't always see in the first six games, and you might not even see it the entire season. And so, again, anybody's game, that's why these middle-of-the-pack games are so important, especially when you got a close result. Yeah, I mean, the conference is fantastic, but by the flip side of that coin, you feel like anybody can beat anybody for the most part on any given night. You like to think that home court advantage matters a lot. It can be difficult in these winter months when the students aren't on campus in full force. But I, I'd say a good presence here for Lynchburg tonight. Roanoke, a good contingent of their own. And we expected a close battle, one that kind of just hovered there between seven or eight points either way throughout. And that's exactly what we've gotten. Roanoke's controlled it throughout this second half. But Lynchburg will not go away. No team is ever led by double digits. Run out trying to find Elijah Davis, and then he hooks under the arm of Morse. Another cheap foul. That's three for Lynchburg at 80-plus feet from its own basket. Thought for a second that Morse might have been caught for a travel, but Davis just a little too active with his hands. Those are the fouls you don't like, and bonuses quickly approaching both teams at six fouls. And we won't ding Davis too much for that foul. I think some of that was just he was trying to bring down the ball and just got caught up. It was, I mean, it was a foul, but you know, not a lot he could do. Uh, Roanoke, though, the one thing you can do is make him pay for the foul far away from the basket. That's exactly what they do, and you touched on the bonus. We're into it, though we would add free throws here no matter what. Kuthan, the basket, and an opportunity at the and one. He enters double digits at 11. It's four for Roanoke in double figures. Kuthan goes to the line, a shaky 0 for 2 start. He's risen his percentage to 60% at three of five. That one rims out for him, so the lead stays at four. Definitely might be some bumps and bruises in this one. Kuthan's played 28 minutes, getting active down low, and a great swat to deny Bugs. Great play from Kuthan. Bugs had the superior position, and Kuthan can't recover much better than that. First block of the day for the big man for Roanoke. It's up in the air. McClary finds his big man under the basket. Four quick points for Kuthan and a block as well. He's owned the last two or three possessions and the lead back up to six. Taylor settles for a mid-range jumper, hustling down the offensive board 
was Elijah Davis, and he thought he'd drawn a foul, but instead it is mouth open for Elijah Davis as he's whistled for the offensive infraction. Wow, and that's just such a momentum shifter. And even going back to Taylor's shot, you just take a few seconds off the shot clock and then try to rush one, not the play that Coach Scott wants, especially when you got nine minutes in this ball game. You have lots of set looks you can go to. Nine minutes to go here like you referenced, and, and Lynchburg finds itself again that six-point margin. It could rise up to eight. It is a one-and-one one here for Morse, but you just hate to pick up so many fouls here. And in what's been a physical game, you don't want to pick up any extra ones so far from the basket. You know, Roanoke, Lynchburg got to a point, you know, early in the second half where they were five of their last six, and Roanoke was one for its last four, yet Roanoke has never let up the lead because they've just been able to get to the free throw line. And you just feel like there's a lot, if you're Lynchburg, that you'd like to have back and feel like you can shore up. Yeah, plenty of time to do so. Still about nine minutes to go. And the deficit is easily within reach. Elijah Davis going to try to say something about that. A rare two-point attempt for the three-point specialist. He's into double figures for the first time this year. And Evan, it's every basket, every defensive play. He's trying to get this crowd on their feet. And, and you know, there's a lot to be said for bringing the energy when you're on the bench. It shows your commitment to the team. Shows your love for the sport, your passion. I don't know if anything compares to showing it on the court. That really gets the whole gym fired up. And Elijah Davis, yeah, he's done it in the stat sheet with his scoring, but he's he's doing a great job, I think, from an energy perspective, keeping this Lynchburg team's morale high. Well, you can actively change the blueprint in many ways, but when you can affect that score line, Elijah Davis, one of those guys who can do it a little bit of anyway. Back to the 1-3-1, Lynchburg lost track of Rosenthal. Davis got there late, might have been enough to alter it. Then he gets out in transition. Good touch pass from Miles Taylor. But Davis leads the layup a little bit short. Davis rotation, tries to block that shot. Makovic got up and after it as well. It's Miles Taylor down on the floor for Lynchburg. Roanoke team will head to its bench, Taylor it's going to see the Lynchburg athletic trainer, Dane Bauer. Some of those plays that are tight, you can't always tell where his leg made contact. He was away from the play. Looks like he is going to head over to the sideline. We're going to see DeAndre Ross, correct me if I'm wrong, Evan, I believe for the first time in this second half, four points from the first. He's only played eight minutes in this game after coming off the bench for the first time this season. It is Lynchburg ball. Tough basket there, scored in close by McClary. I don't know how many times we've said that tonight. McClary came to play, 14 points for him, 19 for Rosenthal, 13 for Kuth, and 11 for Morse. The stars have been stars tonight for Roanoke. That's what you gotta lean on when you're on the road. See if Lynchburg has it in them to counteract there's been good spurts offensively there's been good spurts defensively can they string them together simultaneously put together a run that puts them ahead Rosenthal a three close out again by Davis that one definitely seemed to alter the shot but another offensive rebound is put back up and in from Morse Morse up to 13 that's offensive rebound number 10 we're into double digits now on the offensive glass for the visitors well you had the switch down low and Hart was trying to box out Morris, just couldn't get it done. Now Roanoke up seven, but if you're gonna bring anybody in after an injury, Dre Ross, certainly someone who can be a spark. We'll see if he can keep the pace going. Roanoke, you can see it. They feed off that energy, they get a little something going on the offensive end. It translates to the defense. They're pressing up on you. They're making you work, they're hustling. Uh, but you know, that'll do something to take some of the air out of your sails. It's Pearson Young. They don't get much tougher than that. The fadeaway baseline jumper with a hand in his face. No matter, he's on fire tonight. 14 points, check that 16 for Pearson Young, 60% from the floor. Doesn't Lynch matter the angle he gets a shot off either. So many different options. No look pass from Kuthan. Morse passes up the three for the Rosenthal drive. Kuthan the offensive board and put back. The second chance points, it took a while for him to match the offensive rebounding efforts, but that is starting to materialize. 14 now, second chance points on 11 
offensive rebounds for Roanoke. That's quickly becoming the story in this second half. We've got a timeout with six and a half minutes to go. The under eight will step aside for one final time and come back for what has been a tightly contested ball game. It's a seven point Roanoke lead with six and a half to go from Turner Gymnasium. When creating a sustainable future, your choices matter, even your choice of a college. The University of Lynchburg is the first college in Virginia to go carbon neutral. Our dining hall is green restaurant certified. We compost all of our food waste and purchase our electricity from landfill gas. Now we're turning a hazardous lake into a thriving urban wetland. When you choose Lynchburg, you leave a smaller footprint while building a better tomorrow. Six and a half minutes to go from Lynchburg, Virginia. Turner Gymnasium, Lynchburg trying to make it back-to-back -back wins. Roanoke trying to get back on the winning side of things after a tough loss at Randolph-Macon. It is Roanoke, the visitors, with the advantage right now. Quick three from Jake Hart. Looked good, rattled out, and another foul goes against Lynchburg. It's the ninth of the half, and those are starting to pile up once again here, Evan, for Lynchburg. Uh, Roanoke getting into the bonus early, making Lynchburg pay. The, the free throw percentage hasn't been quite as good here in the second half. They missed a couple, but still 19 of 25 for the game. And just the fact that this is going to be 26 and 27th free throws of the contest uh, speaks volumes on its own. Well, you got to toe the line between being aggressive and, you know, showing that you can stay in this ball game, but also just being cautious. Pearson Young. That was a situation trying to just tip it out. Not a bad play if you're thinking about keeping the possession alive. But now you dig yourself in an even bigger hole. Jonathan Faust back in the ball game, though, so we'll see what he can do, how he can spread the floor. Yeah, and Lynchburg ran that 1-3-1 one -one really well with Faust on the floor. We'll see if they go back to it now that he's back out there. Only the second personal on that last foul by Pearson Young, but Roanoke now out to its largest lead of the game at nine. Coach Scott wanted a foul on that last possession. Instead, just a turnover going against Pearson Young. Stop, pop, off the mark. A good move from McClary, one that we've seen him knock down similar shots throughout the night, but that one just a little too strong. Slammed on the brakes. That's one of those joystick moves in 2K or Madden. Just let the defender sail by you. Just left the shot a little bit askew off to the right. Uh, he does pick up the foul. And we don't want to make it sound like Lynchburg's the only team picking up fouls. This has been a physical game, and although Roanoke has gotten to the line 12 more times than Lynchburg, the foul disparity isn't that great. That's the eight-team foul going against Roanoke. Uh, maybe some of it is picking who you can get to the line. Mason Bukovic steps up right here, and he's about 53% on the year, misses the front end of the one and one, and Lynchburg never gets an offensive possession. Well, the good thing for the Hornets, too, with just under six minutes is you're going to have those opportunities now, being in the bonus, to get some easy ones back, but you have to play defense, and they're not getting a lot of opportunities to even set up that 1-3-1 one, one because they're not getting the makes on the other side. Despite all the fouls, no real individual players really are in a lot of foul trouble. There's that hustle play. Pearson Young getting on the floor. Three on one break. Got to have it if you're Lynchburg. DeAndre Ross off the alley-oop on the lay-in from Jonathan Faust. Evan, every time Faust checks into the game, good things happen. He's great in transition. Did it there. Hustle play credit to Pearson Young, who's given Lynchburg a little bit of everything. Young and Faust, like we've said all game, really keeping this Lynchburg team afloat. Well, that was great positioning, too. As you saw, Dre Ross, he knew when to take off, not getting too far under the basket. Down seven points. I think it's a situation in this ball game where Coach Scott certainly knew what he was doing taking this timeout. You get to run a set defense, try to get a few good looks, and then really slow down this offense. A lot of teams will have this misconception that you have a limited number of ticks or possessions in the ball game, so try to speed up offense. Well, no, that's not how you win down the stretch, and I think Lynchburg has been tested a few times this year. They just have to look for those open threes or get it to the hoop. Yeah, I would be pretty surprised if Lynchburg doesn't open up 
in the 1-3-1 again on this possession. You do get that chance to set your defense, and we'll see. Maybe they stick with a man. Overall, Lynchburg on defense has been pretty solid today. And, you know, you can make the argument, yeah, the offense on a consistent basis has been a lot better than a season ago. But defense comes down to effort and intentionality and I think, you know, reflects just the hustle level and how much your players want it. And I think this Lynchburg team really wants it this year. Big improvements, big strides on the defensive end. And some of that's personnel. You inject a guy like Jonathan Faust into the lineup. That's some instant help on defense. Uh, but Lynchburg's, that's where they're going to have to buckle down. You, you kind of feel like down the stretch here, it will be the 1-3-1. One, one. It will be Faust at the point of it. He's been close to perfect running that role here today. Lynchburg needs that to continue. Lots of passing that you're just waiting, trying to find the open man, but that can be dangerous if you're Roanoke. You can't wait too long to pass up those good looks. Saw Rosenthal think twice about a skip pass that in man defense he might have tried earlier in the game. Great patience, though, from Coach Nunley's squad, and eventually they do get it to Kuthan under the basket. You get it to your one of your best players, if not your best player, and he makes a play. Lead back up to nine, second time in the game. Those have both come recently. Well, Sam, I'll tell you, Kuthan has been so impressive, too, because he has battled through so much in this ball game. Lunchburg's really throwing the kitchen sink at him, so just to get it going up in the air, it was a great look. Quiet first half, a great second half on both ends. Tough battle for the board. Makovic won the initial matchup, but Roanoke had one more guy close to the ball, and Rosenthal is able to scoop it away, and for one of the first times today, we're going to see Roanoke slow things down a little bit. Again, you don't want to be hesitant here. You don't want to take too much time off the clock if you're Roanoke. You want to keep your foot on the gas. You kind of have Lynchburg on the ropes a little bit. And Ro Rosenthal might have tapped the accelerator a little too fast there. Another travel this time going against Roanoke, and that is turnover number 15. Check that 16 for the visitors. Lynchburg winning the turnover battle by four. Another three from Jay Cart. He's looking for his first. He's pure on that one. Nothing but nylon for the freshman. A big bucket for Lynchburg who just will not go away. The deficit is six as we go under four minutes to play in a heated ODAC battle. and I are officially on a break. The couple hey, canoe no, has broken up. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. How are you feeling? Living the dream. Just canoeing. That's the Mexican side behind me. Um, the U.S. is that way. So far, we're all still alive. I really want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Lynchburg hanging around on its home court. Big basket from Jake Hart right before the timeout. We got 3.52 to play. Nine team fouls against Lynchburg, eight against Roanoke. A six point lead for the Maroons. We mentioned earlier, no key individuals in big foul trouble. Four for Gaither for Roanoke, four for Bugs for Lynchburg. And Pearson Young trying to make a hustle play, trying to come up with the steal, sells out. And instead, Kuthan comes up with it right under the basket. That's one of those where you really got to be sure you're going to come up with the steal if you sell out for it. Just feels like another one that slips through the cracks. Young collects. Makovic, the rebound. Officials say he pushed off. Let's we'll see if we can get a replay of that. It kind of felt like there was not a push off, but we'll see if we roll it again. It was close. There was certainly contact underneath. Good job trying to seal out. Yeah, there's not much there, Evan. There's not a whole lot there in a game that's been physical. Say, we'll have to let you make the decision at home, but that's just a tough break for the Hornets because now, again, still in that 
Now double bonus, Roanoke's gonna get two shots. Chance to extend that lead out to 10. And, and, and we'll flip that, you know, it's by the same token, kuthan has been great in this game. You know, you think about that, you feel any contact at all. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> why, why not roll with it? Because like we said, there have been a lot of fouls in this game. A lot of correct fouls called. It's been a physical game. So the whistle's probably on your side there. A heads up play uh, by this senior leader for Roanoke. These are the breaks Lynchburg has to get to because obviously Roanoke kind of gives away a possession with two missed free throws. Turning, stepping back, firing. Taylor off the mark too strong. A rebound this time corralled by Makovic who throws it into the backcourt. No Maroons got a hand on it. Now, now they flip it. The official from under the basket says it was deflected. Makovic was trying to get it to Pearson Young. Young seemed to think that it had been tipped. It was not that sort of haphazard, just slowly hustle it down and make sure the other team doesn't get it because you know it's going to be a backcourt. So Lynchburg does come up with the possession. Maybe a break caught there for Lynchburg. Not sure, but we'll move on. Lynchburg down by eight. Elijah Davis a three. He's got two already. That one halfway down rims out. Sam, I'll tell you too, we might just need a camera on these two coaches because I think both have run pretty much to the possession arrow at the scores table. Some of these calls going back and forth, but that's what you love about ODAC basketball. And as we've said all game, this is one that both teams really feel like they can't lose. Yeah, passionate, passionate ball game here. And the coaches, yeah, like you said, buying into that for sure. A lot of emotion on the sidelines, a lot of emotion on the court. Roanoke's controlled this second half. Can they bring it home on the road? Miles Taylor is going to force the shot clock violation against Roanoke. Maroons say it touched the rim beforehand. Call on the floor, Lynchburg basketball shot clock violation. A couple of teams not too happy with the, <laughs> with the whistles over these last several possessions. And actually, it looked like the shot clock may have reset. Hard to tell. Either I'll tell way. you, this is a referee's nightmare too because it seems like after these few controversial calls, you're just getting to every play. It's sort of going back and forth. Officiating has been really good throughout this evening, so I'm going to defer to the professionals. Again, a hard-fought battle back and forth. Both teams, it feels like, just need to settle down a little bit. A lot of unforced errors, mental miscues, communication issues right now, and that could be very costly, especially if you're Lynchburg, who trails by eight with 1.59 to go. Now with this offensive foul, it'll look like Lynchburg will get a chance to reset. That will be the 11th on the Hornets in the second half. But and like you said, it just seems like every single play, it's just a little bit of commotion that's being caused and both these coaches are almost having to coach to the responses. You can't necessarily get a set look. You can't coach for a set defense. You have to be looking at these situationals. Last two minutes of this game, that's what's gonna matter. Lynchburg just has to ruffle things enough to where they can get a few opportunities. Hornets are one or two possessions away from being right in the thick of this game. Jake Hart may give a little bit of pressure in the backcourt. He'll back off, just wanted to make Clary think about it a little bit. McClary's been fantastic tonight, 16 points on five of seven, shooting perfect at the free throw line. And how about six assists to add to his total as well? He's content to waste a little bit of time off the shot and game clock. Now we'll go down low to Morse, whose shot at first had some contact on it. We'll see who the whistle goes against. Faust and Taylor were contesting it. Miles Taylor does draw the foul, and it'll be the fourth on Taylor. So keep an eye on that as we enter the home stretch. 137 to go, but it'll be two at the line for Morse, who's four for five there today. That was just a good basketball play. You slow down, let the shot clock do the work for you, and then make that post entry and a chance to really just inch ahead again. So we're going to see Dre Ross come in. You have to assume Coach Scott wants to just speed things up. If you get the ball, you do have to think about getting some nice shots, but you don't have too much time to waste. Ross and Davis in, Faust Hart out. That's defense for offense there for Coach Scott. Talk about the situationals. The deficit's 10. Lynchburg's got to have it now. Ross puts the speed on full display, gets to the basket quick. 
Coach Scott may be calling for a foul as well, but nonetheless, Lynchburg does get that basket in a must-have-it situation, and credit to DeAndre Ross with intentionality, getting right to the basket. It's a high-percentage look. Only about 10 seconds come off the clock, and Lynchburg got to feel a little bit better about things, only trailing by eight now, 125 to go. Clock not in their favor. Does give Faust a chance to check back in. Only one timeout remaining here, though, for Lynchburg. Maybe some defense for offense as we saw with Ross coming back in and I think there are a lot of basketball fans out there who would take that play Dre Ross just going straight to the rim in late game situations almost every time because not necessarily that we might see it now but you're thinking with just a few ticks left on the game clock so many people want to spot up for threes and Lynchburg can take those three points but this is a spot where you have to get a bucket almost every possession having to be perfect down the stretch Great work from Ross, just making sure he could get that high percentage look. Jake Hart is going to check back into the game as well. Lynchburg going to have to try and defend without fouling. 30 seconds on the shot clock here. On last possession, Roanoke was content to run that down a bit. If they do the same here, you could get it under a minute before Lynchburg touches the basketball again, down three possessions, and just one for its last six from beyond the arc. Cam O'Connor going to check back in as well have not gotten the chance to see him much tonight been in foul trouble uh, picked up two early in the second half or first half excuse me and then picked up a third full court press here for lynchburg and it's working effectively right now now mcclary will break it opportunity for a break morgan will slow it down and lynchburg gives a foul felt content to go ahead and give one to marcus morgan now morgan for all of his talents, he's good at most everything on the basketball court. Only 61% at the line. That's not a bad guy to foul. It is Cam O'Connor, though, that gets tagged with giving the foul. So that's his fourth as well. So just got to be kind of careful there because Jake Hart, yeah, really it had to be one of them. Jake Hart was the other guy close. He also has three. Certainly matters down the stretch. I think something that if you're Coach Scott, you can be pretty optimistic about is the fact that Roanoke really hasn't been efficient in breaking the zone presses today. We know with that 1-3-1 early in the second half had some trouble. So if you can get these buckets, there are definitely some looks you can get, but smart just to get the foul now. You still got 75 seconds on the clock, so lots of time for Lynchburg to try and earn some points back. Hornets can come up with some fast offense. Good on the first was Morgan. Good on both of them. Sometimes you just got to put that free throw percentage coming into the game in the back pocket and look to your clutch players to make clutch plays. Hoisting up a three is Davis, not really even that close. Taylor scoops up the relatively easy for this game offensive rebound, the put back, he is fouled. So he can cut it back down to eight. Again, that's tricky. It was a fast possession, not a terrible look for Davis who carved out a little bit of space for himself and he does rise up pretty high on that three point jumper, but you wonder if Lynchburg could have found something a little bit better. Again, it's, it, you got to toe that line, right? You can't run off that much time. You're down by three possessions. And, of course, Miles Taylor now at the line, about 70% coming into today. He's been really good. He's been on a hot streak at the free throw line as of late, as we touched on, but now just one of four in this evening's contest. Make that two of five. He's good on the second. Does cut it back down to a three-possession game. Lynchburg be real nice. You can get a 10 second violation, a five second violation, a steal, just something without fouling here. They break it with McClary and then ultimately Rosenthal again. Rosenthal finds Kuth and touch foul given by Jake Hart. That's his fourth. And the three did go up and in from McClary on the near side. But again, that will not count. So we'll get two now from Kuthen. Hasn't been great at the line this evening, three of eight. But again, you wonder. Clutch players, they can clutch plays at the end of the game. A fourth year senior, leader of this Roanoke team. Leaves the first one short. Now that's not huge. I mean, you can still make this back to a three possession game even just by splitting it. And that kind of feels like enough. Obviously, you'd love to go two for two. But for Lynchburg, it really only truly feels like a win if he misses them both. He does make good on the second. Offense is back in with Elijah Davis here for Lynchburg. Hornets have 57 seconds and trail by 10. Well, obviously you gotta get a few threes or something big here. 
Ross could have been called for the travel. Looks like it's going to be a foul first. This is just what happens, though. You put yourself in the hole early in this half. We know that Rono came out. They just really had their foot on the gas pedal from the opening pass into the second half. I think it has been so important that Coach Nunley's squad has just stayed ahead. You talked about it earlier, the fact it really seems like they haven't relinquished that lead since they've held on to it. And so Lynchburg now just trying to take a bite at the apple and find some way trying to get a miracle here in Turner. It's not by accident that so many coaches harp on that middle portion of the game, whatever time frame they make it, four minutes, six minutes, eight minutes, whatever it may be. It, it's important. It sets the tone going into and coming out of the break. That goes a long way. And, yeah, I think you encapsulated that, Evan. That's that's what Lynch or Roanoke, excuse me, has done. And, and when you can do it on the road in a hostile environment, that's just all the more impressive and I think showcases a, a really mentally tough team that Roanoke brought to Lynchburg here this evening. Foul off the ball before the inbounds pass, and not ideal, <laughs> goes against Pearson Young. That's his fourth. So now Young, Taylor, Hart, O'Connor, and Tyler Bugs, who we've not seen much in the second half, they all have four for Lynchburg. Playing your deck of cards, you're starting to really run out of options if you're Lynchburg. We're going to see Elijah Davis step back into this ball game. Again, credit the Maroons for the hustle. I mean, this is a conference where, as we've said, I don't really think that we should come in saying that Roanoke are underdogs and they're 11th in the conference. If that tells you something, just with how even the ODAC slate can be, they're 0-4 coming into this one. But these are the games. I mean, when you get to the tournament, it does not matter what your record is. It just matters that you get there. And great execution. Carrying that back pivot foot was DeAndre Ross, and that kind of feels like that final nail in the coffin. Now, never say never. I was on the call for that women's game against Bridgewater, and while Lynchburg did not ultimately prevail in that one, a, a really admirable comeback that led with Lynchburg ball in its hands in the final possession with a chance to tie or win the game. So you never know. It was a similar position to this. You know, Roanoke's got to continue to make its free throws, got to continue to be sound with the little things. But so far, it's been about perfect for Coach Nunley's squad. He's got to be happy with that. Pearson Young's going to give the touch foul after a good amount of time. 14 seconds ran off there. Never mind. They will give it to DeAndre Ross. That is pretty important. It's only his second. Would have been the end of the evening had it gone against Pearson Young. Talked about fouls and how many we have seen in this contest. Now 47 on the day and five guys for the Hornets with four. So that just speaks to not only how many players have came into this game and tried to make an influence, but also just how everybody is really getting physical. And on one hand, that's great for coaches. You don't have to coach hustle. That's something that's going to come along the way. But it has really worked to the Maroons' favor today, and they have been able to capitalize 29 makes from the strike. The lead is a game high at 12. Only 20 seconds to go, Rosenthal to the line on the last two trips, and he's 88% on the year. O'Connor draws nothing there. Would imagine Lynchburg will just let this one run out. As they came back home following a big road win at Shenandoah, a game that we knew would be tightly contested, and Roanoke on the other side coming off that loss. Felt like they could come in here and steal one, and that's exactly, Evan, what they did. Checked into Turner's Gymnasium. Wayne Prophet Court left their mark on it. Zach Rosenthal is fantastic. He finishes with 23, uh, perhaps even more importantly, he only put up uh, four made field goals, 11 of 11 at the line, and that was especially prevalent down the stretch and sort of encapsulates uh, really the biggest point of this game, 39 free throw attempts for the visitors, and they made 30 of them, 77% as a team at the line for Roanoke. Well, this was a game that I would be very curious to hear thoughts from the coaches after this one because even for coach Nunley you know I think this was a game where it just was so roughed up so physical so quick that it wasn't the perfect blueprint but Roanoke just got it done doing the little things you talked about free throws they got those mid-range jumpers in the first half when they needed them and when every moment was sort of up for grabs it seemed like the Maroons grabbed it credit to Lynchburg though as well because they have had fight throughout the season and we've touched on it the fact that they have only had back-to-back -back losses once this season, and so expect them to hop back pretty quickly, and there's a tough part of the schedule coming up in the Yodak. I think every team is saying that, but especially here in the Hill City. So 
can't take too much time to soak. You have to really go out and make sure that you're ready. Yeah, that's why you have to harp on these home games so much, as you know. You don't, don't want to put too much of an eye to what's down the road, but you always know that there's something tough uh, coming up. And, yeah, that really tough stretch against some nationally ranked opponents is right around the corner here for Lynchburg. So uh, maybe a tough one to swallow at home. Lynchburg fought all the way down to the final whistle, but a very impressive road win for Coach Clay Nunley's squad away from home, their first of the season, 0-5 of coming into tonight away from home. Uh, Roanoke did it to the tune of four double-digit scores. They were, for the most part, the usual suspects, Morse, McClary, Cuthan, and Rosenthal. Mentioned Rosenthal leading all scores with 23. Pearson Young led the way for Lynchburg with 16. Uh, it was th uh, four double-digit scores for Lynchburg as well, matching the visitors. Elijah Davis in his, we'll call it, official return, meaningful minutes. Uh, he had 12, Miles Taylor 11, DeAndre Ross 10. Uh, that will do it for tonight's contest for Sam Graham, Evan Gates, the rest of our fantastic LHSN crew director this evening was uh, our very own Sam Rice. Nice to have him there behind the controls here for us in Turner Gymnasium. And Evan, just leaving on one final word. We hope to see you very, very soon. It'll be Evan and I again here on Saturday. A little women's basketball in Wayne Prophet Court, Lynchburg taking on Averett. And on the men's side, we'll be back in just a week from now. We hope to see you for both of those games. And we thank you so much for tuning in with us tonight. Once more, for Evan Gates, I'm Sam Graham, and we will see you next time.